we have a package from Lexmark's 567. Why is the box opened? Was going to get started on the original premise on him sending this box, but uh, it turns out I ran into a little bit of a snafu. I'll tell you about the project later, but the main reason this was sent was because of these cables. There are two of them here. They're tangled up. There we are. These are component video cables. We'll take just one end. So, if we sort this out, there we go. You have your red, green, blue for video. And then, because there's another red, they made the connector gray and gray for the white for stereo audio. And then that's all going into this jobby all the way to the other end. And there's that. I didn't know there was two of them. That will indeed come in handy. And again, I'll show you the project a little later and tell you about the uh, snafu. But he also threw in a whole bunch of other stuff in here. We have some RAM. This is PC-133, 256 meg, SD RAM. Might be useful. Maybe. I don't know. Definitely not in the near future, but in the future, future, maybe. And we got a 256 DDR PC-2100. 266 and this is another one of those I believe Where here we are Yeah, another 256 So there's that I Think I have a bunch of 256s and the laptops all end up with 512 meg because You double 256 and that's what it adds up to laptop CD rewritable DVD ROM drive button emergency eject hole with the bracket try and the connector. Not sure exactly how old this is. Let's see if there's a date. Manufactured, wow, March 11th, 2003. It's a Quanta storage drive. Uh, IDE most likely pretty much almost certain so that's good for old laptops and This I don't know if I can use looks like it's probably out of that same laptop that that came out of based on the gray floppy drive Finding something that'll take that I uh, I don't know this is a Panasonic And I don't see a date on it, but it says don't press this area so, okay, we won't. And then we have a cable which says iOmega and zip. This is a zip drive parallel port cable. The gray for the PC end and the blue to match the blue of the iOmega zip drive right over here. Sticker is kind of coming off of it. That's fine. I forget if they all did that or not. Parallel port and pass-through. Power over there. There is a power brick in here. And if it has a right angle plug, which it does, then this is the correct power for that. Just like that. And you would run this, if I could unplug it a second and do this right. You plug it in like that, and then the cable fits in the guy over there. And it runs out, so it's a nice smooth, and that was iOmega. And a lot of you probably remember these. Planning a zip drive extravaganza. I think I'll call it a zip drive retrospective. Got a bunch of these things. We'll see which ones work, which ones don't what the deal is so we got the power supply for that oh in fact it even says zip not to be confused with george zip we have a power adapter that goes to a barrel jack it says ac adapter puts out 19 volts 4.7 amps so 
power laptop with that, center positive. Laptops generally are 19 volts. Another power supply here has a different looking one. Looks looks like a Dell, but it says HP, so I guess it's an HP one for an HP laptop. So that's convenient to have. And oh, another stick of RAM in here. I think this is another 256 PC 133. Yep. And then the piece de resistance, which I almost wanted to do a JK18 Oddware about, but it's such a quick video. This is the iOmega Zip Unleashed. What is this thing? What it is, this flips out and can plug in to charge. This has a connector that flips out. This flips up and it's a little fidgety to get just right, but it sort of locks in. You plug in the plug there, get it lined up, and then this thing is supposed to snap into place and that's it. And here's your new zip drive, which is now battery powered. And there's two of them. The batteries, I am sure, are shot in these, and there's no chance of them ever charging. I'll give it a shot, of course, to see. <coughs> Excuse me, but definitely a product I never, ever knew existed, but apparently it did. This would generally be geared toward laptop users that would take their zip drives with them, and instead of carrying a whole extra power supply, this guy, and having to plug that in, if you really wanted to go truly on battery power, then you would have the zip unleashed, and that would be a battery pack for the zip drive. No idea how long the battery is supposed to last. Of course, that's really all going to depend on how much read-write access the drive is going to have um, in terms of it lasting. Um, there's almost no information on these things online. So uh, just sort of an interesting gadget to hang on to. I'll see if they take a charge. Probably not. But getting back to these component cables and all that, let me show you that. And before we do that, huge thanks to Lexmarks 567 for the junk here. Always comes in handy to throw in the hoard. Never know when you're going to need a 19 volt adapter. Never know when you're going to need a zip unleashed. You never know, but Jay is always prepared. So thanks again to Lexmarks567. Go subscribe to his channel. There's going to be a link in the prescription, and I'll show you the project. I went to Italian, and I got a new TV. It's actually not new. It's quite old, in fact. This was featured in an XJO 81X video that he had rather recently as of the time of recording of this video. I will put a link in the prescription to that video. And he showed this TV because he replaced it. And um, he said that it was going to a good home. Well, it's here now. The old Magnavox 25 inch, according to Lexmarks 567. Odd size. I, I've heard of them, but didn't even know that that thing was kind of rare in that regard that it was 25 and not 27 inch, but um, that TV that was here, I had found thrown out many years ago, had the whiff help me load it in the car right quick, and then we were leaving later that night for a couple of days, so uh, it turns out that it ended up working, in fact it had a sign on it when it was thrown out that said works, so I picked it up, it didn't have a remote in that, it never had the greatest picture, but hey, it was there, and it is what it is. Uh, this was uh, the old TV, uh, because it was a CRT and Lexmarks had expressed interest in it. I said, I don't know what to do with it. He says, well, can I have it? I said, absolutely. So I gave him that, and he had a video on that, and I'll put a link in the prescription to that. So this is an ongoing project right now.
down on the floor in the mess of cables, in the sea of cables, and all of that, is a DVD player, an Android TV box, and a cable box. And the plan is to put those into this cabinet. I never did that with the old TV, and you can see all of the cables just draped over the front of it. Well, I want to do this Italian. I don't want to see no wires. I don't want no cables. I want a wireless. I need a booster. <laughs> I, I want to do this up nice, because this TV, like, it, it just fits this area. It is just perfect for that. It just fit. In fact, it doesn't fit because the feet on the stand stick out. But hey, what are you going to do? This thing was built in with the house, this corner piece. So it was just here. And there are shelves in the cabinet down below. With the old TV, I didn't bother with all that crap. And I just had the cable box on top of the TV because there was room. Uh, there's not room now. And I had a clock there that'll that actually fits in that little opening in the TV so I could shove the clock in there. That's pretty cool. So I'll do that. But all the cables in that always just draped over the front of it. And it was always with it, oh one day, one day, one day, one day. The original plan was to drill through the top of this thing so the cables could go straight down. The problem with that is it has this mosaic tile on it as you see and drilling through that they're gonna crack they're gonna break it's gonna be bad all around so the plan is to actually drill through the wall not this wall but the back wall because there are holes in the cabinet already that were there and that way I can run it out that way and back down and all of that so how does this tie in with component cables the project is kind of in on hold right now because to drill the hole, the problem is I can't lift this TV alone. And about the only way I can do it is to cantilever it out like that. And I'll have to have the whiff hold it while I go in there and drill if it's even going to be possible. I tried cantilevering it out just as much as I could while still hanging on to it. Uh, my arm just wasn't long enough and I don't want to splinter the wood paneling either so I want to drill it nice and you know obviously taking the TV down and putting it back up is an option but it's just easier for somebody to hold it. So now why about the component cables and what prompted this whole box to show up? Uh, Lexmark's had those cables he says yeah I'm not going to use them I said, well, good, I can, because the cable box and the DVD player both have component video out. Now, you can get 1080p over component. It's still, quote-unquote, an analog connection, but if you're going to try to tell me that you can see the difference between an analog and a digital connection, you need to check in with your psychiatrist. I'll tell you that. Uh, we are analog beings and can't handle digital data. So because of that, uh, it has to be analog. Whether it's analog converted right in the TV or three feet away from the TV, who gives a flying fuck through a rolling donut? Where it's converted, it's close the fuck enough. Now, uh, because both of those take a uh, component, I can hook both of those up using those component cables, the DVD player and the uh, cable box. <coughs> this TV has two HDMI inputs. The uh, Android TV box does output composite, but really, you know, it's like, come on, because it has HDMI. So I can plug in HDMI on that, However, I also happen to have an old computer box. There is a video on that, um, around, maybe two even, and that thing has HDMI built in. It's not doing anything, it hasn't been used in years, in fact, and uh, I figured that might not be a bad idea to hook up as well, and there's your two HDMI ports, 
Now, where are you going to plug in the cable box and the DVD player? So why not do a component? I have the cables, I have everything else I need, plus this has multiple composite inputs and as video inputs. In fact, there's fucking one right on the goddamn front to the left of the uh, yellow cable there. <laughs> It's just plugged in temporarily, so hey, why not go ahead and use the S-Video on that to do it? Now, why did I want this TV? Well, it's actually unplugged now, and I do I have a source? I have a source. Give me a minute. The reason I wanted this TV is because it's a fucking plasma. Plasma screens are fantabulous all around. This DVD player has been sitting here for years. This was recorded on a VHS tape that was copied to a VHS tape that was copied to a VHS tape that was then transferred to a video CD. Not a DVD, video CD. So the quality is really pretty bad, but yet it's there. And we were looking at a Chevy emblem. That is my original first car, my 81 Chevrolet Citation. I have a video of this on the channel already. I'll put that in the prescription as well so you can actually watch the video. And it's just a matter of kind of looking around at the car. I'll fast forward through it and all of that. We get in over here. We look around a little bit. The mileage, all the gadgetry and stupid shit. The engine. The lights on it as well fog lights and all that. I actually added yet another set. So this was before that. And I added the stone guards to that and the reverse lights. That was before we had an LED. Oh, we want to go back here a minute. Because we all love the startup kind, which is here. The alarm. Warm start, so cranker wanker. It's got a carbonated Iron Duke engine. I think it was actually an oil Duke engine, as you can see. It leaked every bit of oil that I put in it. I had to fill it up like every two weeks. It's knocking and planking and making all kinds of great sounds. But it ran. Back to that. Tick, 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 tick. Clank, 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 clank. <laughs> oh, that car was something else. And then this actually goes into the next clip, the next uh, video. Well, here we go. Joe finally got his wish. He got himself his grandma's old car. Today, we're going to check it out. Now let's see if I can get my old car started. Cold start. That was it. Never a problem. <laughs> and yes, the obligatory check engine light. Let it warm up a minute and then we'll be on our way. Well, here we go. I'm going to try to take as much as I can. This was an old throwback Thursday. So anyway, that was the deal with that. So that's the only source I have hooked up to it right now. And it's actually only on composite because it's just sitting here for now. That's actually the only thing hooked up to it at the moment. But anyway, that is the story on all of that and why the box arrived. But it's got some other nice goodies in it, so we should be able to make some good use out of that. Thanks again to Lexmarks 567 for the box of junk for the hoard, and also, of course, to XJO81X, link in the description to his channel, 
for giving me this fantabulous TV. This thing, I got to go into the service menu and see how many hours are on it. But, uh, ooh, yeah. Plasma screens just kick ass. Absolutely kick ass all around. Uh, I don't even remember the size of this. 42? I'm going to say 42. I could be wrong on that. I don't even know the model number. And it's going to be damn near impossible to actually show you the data on the back of it. But I got the book, so hopefully I can get the information when this project is complete. And of course I will bring you that. That will then bring this video to a close. So I thank you very kindly for watching, and I greatly appreciate it. Make sure that you click like, make sure that you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.